Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring you God's truth. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for Jesus said you will guide us into all truth. And we expect nothing less from you right now. We receive our daily bread from heaven. And I declare, Lord, every body is removed. Yokes are being destroyed right now in the life of everyone who's watching or listening to this. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we got up to verse 12 yesterday, and I said I'm going to explain verse 11 and 12 to you. So let's go there. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 11. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you. Now this was the point. Others were partakers of this power over them. So there are people who are coming to collect money from them in the name of the gospel. You know, it says, if others have been, if others be partakers of this power over you, are we not rather? It's not supposed to be us. If anybody's going to demand money from you, if anybody's going to demand your carnal things, now, of course, you know what that means. Is it not we, rather? Are we not supposed to be the ones? Why? Because we have sown into your lives. Praise God. So, now, not because, now look at what Paul said. Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Paul said, we didn't make those demands because we didn't want to hinder the gospel of Christ. Meaning, the way you go about asking for things can hinder the gospel that you preach. I'm telling you the truth. See, you know, you don't, as, 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 as a minister called by the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't go around asking people for money. You don't do that. You say, but, but, but how then am I going to um, do the work of the ministry? Like, listen, you know, several years ago, I went before the Lord. And see, because when, when it was clear to me that the Lord wanted me to preach the gospel and to live by the gospel, I went before the Lord and I said, Lord, okay, so, how are we going to do this? And then the Lord began to speak to me and he shared things with me. You know, that's why I tell people, make sure your truth is from the Lord Jesus Christ himself, not from another man. Yeah, see, it's not about what you study and understood. There is no life there. It's good, but it doesn't give life. But what the Lord himself tells you, it propels, it gives you life. So the Lord spoke to me, he said, he said, look at you. He says, I've got money, a lot of money on the earth that you don't even know about. And I said, you know, of course, yes, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness. He said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I said, Lord, what are you talking about? He said, the tithes. Now, I, I was talking to the Lord concerning the work he's called me to do. And here's the Lord talking to me about tithe, and the Lord had told me not to start a church. So I said, okay, what about tithe? Because tithe goes to the church. And the Lord says, that's the mistake you've been making all this while. And many of my children are making that mistake. Because they think they are tithing, but I am not receiving it. <sighs> okay. Now, when the Lord talks to you like that, what do you do? Humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm listening to everything you've got to say. And the Lord began to explain to me, and, and this is it. Now, he, he showed me from the Old Testament. You know, he asked me the question, what, did, what do you think is the purpose of that? Why do you think I commanded them to die? See, I tell people this. Every child of God who walks by the Spirit of God you will find out that Titan is one of his principles. And I'm not talking about whether you believe or you don't believe. You see, there are things the Holy Spirit himself will teach you. And you will not learn to do it right. So, so the Lord began to talk to me and he says, Look, 
my children take my money and they spend it the way they like and they think they are giving it to me. And the Lord gave me an illustration. He said, imagine you do business with someone and the person calls you. I said, that business we did, the payment has come. I've collected the payment. And he said, wow, praise God. And then the next thing the person says is, I, I saw that your cousin that you introduced me to the other time, you know, you came over to this place. And when I saw, in fact, I was leaving the bank, I just saw him. So I just decided to give him your own part. So I've given him your part. I'm sure he will get it across to you. What, what are you going to say? Is that what I told you? Who, who sent you to do that? That's, what, that's the most reaction. You're not going to say, oh, good, 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 good. No. Why? You didn't authorize that cousin to collect it for you. And, and, and some of us will go as she has said, are you that dumb? Are you so dumb? Couldn't you have at least called me? Yes, that's the point. Couldn't you have called me? So the Lord asked me this question. He said, now, am I dumb or am I deaf? So, okay, I get it. So what are you saying? And he says, you know, he, he told me then, he says, you, you do this and you will teach my children how to do it. How? Every time you receive money and you want to tithe, you are supposed to ask the owner, now we believe tithe belongs to God. It doesn't belong to the church. It belongs to God. God is alive. He's alive. He's well. He's not one God that cannot speak. No, he's alive. And, and listen, you take that tithe and then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, you've blessed me and I want to honor you with my tithe. And let me tell you this addition, it should be the first thing you do with that money. The first, the very first thing you do with that money when you receive it is to take out your tithe. Oh yeah, take it out. See, Because you need to honor the Lord with it. It's not about giving the money. It's the honor that is attached to it. So you go before the Lord and say, Lord, you've blessed me and here is your time. What would you have me do with it? And then the word of the Lord will come to you. Send it to so, so and so. Send it to that preacher. Send it to that pastor. Send it to that church. Send it to that organization. Send it to that, that orphanage. Send it to that. Send it to your neighbor. Send it to that, that other person over there. Said, really? Oh, yes. The owner of the money should tell you what he wants to be done with his money. And the Lord said something to me that, that really got me. I mean, he just summed it up. And then he said, when I tell you what to do with it and you obey, it means I have received the money. Now think about it. What assurance to know that God has received your tithe. The same way, going to the illustration he gave to me, you called me up and said, oh, the money has been paid. I said, okay, good and fine. I said, okay, you know what? Can you send this amount of money to my account? Send this one to, you know that my cousin and Joseph, yes, this, I'll send you his number. Call him and give him this amount. Now, when he does everything that I say, I have received the money. See? Because it is a relationship. Now, now I remember talking to a pastor and then he says, how many Christians hear the voice of God? And I said, no, 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 that's not the right question to ask then. The right question should be, how many Christians are there? Praise <laughs> God. Because if you don't hear the voice of God, you cannot say you're a Christian. You say, huh, really? Oh, yeah. What you are doing is religion. You are just following the masses, following the crowd. Oh, we go to church, we go to church. If you don't hear the voice of God, you are not a Christian. I'm sorry. See, why do I say that? What makes you a Christian is the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is not in your life, you are not a Christian. And what makes you know the presence of the Holy Spirit? It's not the shaking. It's not the, you know, it, it is the voice that He speaks. In heaven, they don't see the form of God. They don't see any figure. All they hear in heaven is the voice of God. Praise God. So, so the presence, the, the evidence of the presence of God in one's life is that he hears the voice of God. It's not the shaking. No, 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 it's not. It's not the feeling. No, it's not. Remember Elijah? There was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. There was, there was a wild wind, but the Lord was not in the wild wind. 
What was he looking for, the Lord in the wild? What was he looking for? He was waiting to hear the voice of God from that wild wind, from that earthquake. When he didn't hear it, he knew the Lord wasn't there. So you can fall and shake and do all the stunts you want to do. If the voice of God doesn't come to you, it is not the Lord. Praise God. Oh, it's not the Lord. I'm telling you the truth. So the evidence of the, 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 of the evidence that you're a Christian is the, that the Holy Spirit is in you. And the evidence of you having the Holy Spirit is that you hear the voice of God. Oh, sure. True. So begin to set your heart right. So when it comes to your giving and tithing, it must be done by your response to the voice of God that you hear. And, and here's what the Lord told me. He said, listen, if my children do this, there will be no poor person in the world. And then secondly, he said, you are going to take out the corruption that is in the world. Now notice he didn't say in the church. He said in the world. And I, when he said that, I said, Lord, in the world? He said, yes, because the church is the light of the world, right? So the world will only manifest the kind of light that the church is beaming into it. Did you get that? You see a nation full of corruption? Check the church. You see a nation that is free and clean? Check the church. Now, 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 listen, when I say the church, the, see, no matter how small the church is, check the quality of Christians, people who say they are Christians in that place. You can tell. If there's corruption in the church, definitely there will be corruption in the city, in the nation. But if the church is clean, the nation will be clean. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, that's why, oh, you see, that's why sometimes we pray, oh God, visit our nation, visit our nation, and God looks at it and says, huh. You know, like he said in Malachi, he said, who will stand the day of his coming? Who will stand? Why? Because he is a refiner's fire. He will sit like a refiner's fire. And he will purge everything. So, so you are saying, God, come and judge all these politicians. Well, God is looking at you because it is your light that is causing the politicians to do what they are doing. So when God comes, you are the one he will visit first and you cannot handle it. So it's better he stays away for now. Praise God. Oh yeah, I'm telling you the truth. So you start stamping out the corruption in the church. Because I'll tell you what. When we take our tithe before the Lord and ask him, Lord, what do I do with this? And then he commands you where to take it to. He commands you where to. He will not command you to take it where it's not needed. Do you get that? He, you won't take it to where it's not needed. You will take it to where it's needed. So you, you will just find this experience that anytime the Lord commands you to take your tithe to this person, you go, you give your tithe, say, oh, wow, really God spoke to you because this was the situation. We were in need of this and this is it. Listen to me. This is what the Lord is calling the church to begin to do now. Don't wait for... That's why Paul said, let every man give as he has proposed in his heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity. Because God loves a cheerful giver. This is what it means to be a cheerful giver. I heard the voice of God. And then I, I take up my phone. Hey, how are you doing? I, I just heard God. He said, I should, I should send money to you. Now, most times when the Lord commands us like that, we don't even tell the people it's our tithe. No, no, because we are giving God our tithe. See, we, we, you see, the offering of your tithe is to the Lord. Now, when he commands you to give it, you're not giving tithe to someone. You're giving money to someone. You understand what I'm saying? So, tithe is between you and the Lord. So, nobody needs to know that you're giving your tithe to whoever. Hmm. So you, you take it before the Lord and you bless the name of the Lord. You thank him for the blessing, for, for making way for you to have that money or receive that, that stuff or whatever it is. You bless his name and then you say, Father, I want to honor you with my tithe. And sometimes the Lord will not tell you immediately what to do with it. He may not tell you immediately. What do I do in that case? Keep it. He say, what if I eat it? Now that becomes your discipline. Keep it. If it's money, put it in a bank account. You, you can have a bank account that this account only contains my tithe. 
And you keep it there and keep keeping it there until the Lord commands you what to do. What if he doesn't tell me in a while? Yes. You know, even in the Old Testament, the year of tithing, they keep their tithe for the whole year. Now that's the shadow. This is the real now. So wait until he commands you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we bless you for understanding. Thank you. Your grace is working in our lives and bringing to pass the reality of your truth in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.